before we break for lunch, I would like to go through this because it's pretty straightforward. Council on American Islamic Relations is Hamas. They are not just a support entity for Hamas. They were created by Hamas to be a Hamas front in D.C. to be a public relations front for Hamas, serving that political piece of what the Muslim Brotherhood does, still part of the Jihad. How many of you have heard of CARE? Okay, that's just about everybody. So let's dig in. First of all, Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmad. Nihad Awad publicly said at Barry University in 1994 that I'm in support of the Hamas movement more than any other movement in the region. He said that publicly. Omar Ahmad, the chairman of the board for CARE back then, what these are the two founders, said Islam isn't in America to be equal to any other faith but to become dominant. The Quran, the Muslim book of scripture, should be the highest authority in America and Islam, the only accepted religion on earth. Well, I would say those two things right there give you already a disposition of who these guys are, but I'd say you can throw that out if you want. I'm okay with that. Let's look at facts. How about we go back to the explanatory memorandum that I showed you before as evidence. These three groups, the Islamic Association for Palestine, the UASR, and the Occupied Land Fund, we're all RLMB and Hamas fronts. The Occupied Land Fund became the Holy Land Foundation. The two founders of CARE were the former directors of the IAP, which documents demonstrate are Hamas. And I'll get to that. Now, the International Muslim Brotherhood set out a directive to create Palestine committees in every country where they had a presence. And at the time, they were in about 80 countries. Today, the Muslim Brotherhood has functional structure in about 100 countries or more. Excuse me. So in the United States, they created the U.S. Palestine Committee, or the Palestine Section, here in the United States. That is Hamas. And they created these three organizations. Everybody with me so far? This is not rocket science, but I want you to see this visual of how this unfolded. So these are the first three organizations. The fourth one they created was CARE. How do I know that? Well, because we have the evidence. So, the IAP, the leadership were the two guys that founded CARE, and the chairman of the board was the designated Hamas guy. In the intelligence and law enforcement realm, we call this a clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're back to these guys. Well, nicely, during the 2004 FBI raid, we found a list of the leaders of the Palestine section in the United States. How convenient. And guess whose names were on there? The two founders of CARE. Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmad. This is a uh, alias for uh, Omar Ahmad. And of course, Musa Abu Marzouk is at the top because he's the leader of the Palestine Committee of Hamas in the United States. But let's get down to brass tacks. In 1993, the FBI surveilled and covered a meeting of the Palestine Committee in the United States, i.e. Hamas. Why? Because they're Hamas. And they put microphones in the rooms, and they intercepted phone calls, and they took pictures, and they took video, and they followed people around. And we have all the transcripts that were entered into evidence in the Holy Land Foundation trial, which detail which Nihad Awad and Omar Ahmad, the founders of CARE, were sitting in these meetings discussing creating a new entity to be a public relations front for Hamas. That was in 1993. CARE was created in 1994. Call those clues and evidence and facts. The FBI says that this meeting in 1993 was a meeting among senior leaders of Hamas. All attendees are Hamas members. Who was at the meeting? Omar Ahmad and Nihad Awad, the founders of CARE. Are we getting close? We're pretty much done, right? But see, I like beating this dead horse to death because I want you to walk out of here and know that CARE is a Hamas entity and it's factual and it was entered in the largest Hamas trial ever successfully prosecuted in U.S. history. So, there are 246 named unindicted co-conspirators in this trial. CARE is one of them. However, I would argue that's not the most important point. Look up at the top. The following are individuals and entities who are or were members of the U.S. Muslim Brotherhood's Palestine Committee. That means all of these individuals and entities are Hamas. Hamas. How about that? 
Their unindicted co-conspirator, which by the way means there's enough evidence to indict, but the Department of Justice determined they're not going to do it. And obviously you're not going to try to indict 246 entities at once. Guess who else is a named unindicted co-conspirator and a member of the Palestine Committee because he was on the executive board of Hamas in the United States as the leader of CARE, founder of CARE. Well, the Islamic Society of North America and the North American Islamic Trust which I already described to you, were two leading Muslim Brotherhood entities, are also unindicted co-conspirators in the largest Hamas trial in U.S. history because they funneled a ton of money directly to Hamas leaders and Hamas entities overseas. And Congressman Louis Gohmert, in questioning the FBI director about nine months ago, held up a stack of those financial records, shaking them, like, what's this? Why are we working with these people? Sending hundreds of thousands of dollars to Hamas. Well, ISNA, Nate, and CARE filed a motion with the court and said, we want our name off the unindicted co-conspirator list. The prosecution filed this memorandum saying, no way, the evidence shows that they are who we say they are. And let me quote the prosecutors, the government. ISNA and Nate, in fact, shared more with Holy Land Foundation than just a parent organization, the Muslim Brotherhood. They were intimately connected with Holy Land and its assigned task of providing financial support to Hamas. Let me say that again. ISNA and Nate were intimately connected with HLF and its assigned task of providing financial support to designated terrorist organization Hamas. ISNA and Nate. ISNA, whose president sits and advises the National Security Council, who sits on the Department of Homeland Security's advisory committee, who works with the FBI, that same guy. ISNA, who Senator Dick Durbin said he was so pleased because ISNA advised his committee in preparation for his hearings last summer. Is that the same ISNA who Valerie Jarrett spoke Yep, it's the same ISNA that religious leaders and political leaders and appointees to the president all work with. Yes, same ISNA. The U.S. Muslim Brotherhood created the U.S. Palestine Committee, which documents re reflect was initially comprised of these three organizations. CARE was later added to these organizations. The mandate of these organizations per the International Muslim Brotherhood was to support Hamas. We're done, aren't we? Are we not done? But guess what? We're going to kick this horse one more time. The judge ruled as follows. The judge in the case looked at the evidence and said, now first of all, the judge said that the unindicted co-conspiratorist should not have been released publicly. And he said that, that creates some issues. However, and then the judge went through all the evidence of Holy Land, the key stuff that he needed to show, went through the 93 Philadelphia meeting where the Hamas had their meeting, and he says this. The government has produced ample evidence to establish the associations of CARE, ISNA, and NATE with HLF, Hamas Front, IAP, Hamas Front, and with Hamas headquarters. <coughs> Done. Went to a, a, the appellate three-judge panel who unanimously ruled that these three entities will remain on the unindicted co-conspirator list because of evidence and facts that they are who they say they are. Now, we're going to break for lunch. When we come back, we are going to look at these organizations and a couple others, and then we're going to look at where are they inside the system and how they are operating at both the political and the, uh, the local level. So thank you. We'll see you.